What's up guys? Um, it's been about a week and a half, I guess, since I put out the last video. Um, I'm kind of bummed out today. I just, I got back from vacations at the beach for a week. I should be happy. I am about that, but um, for those of you that follow my iBoats thread, you probably already know why I'm bummed, but so a week and a half ago before I left on vacation um, is when I finished up the rear seat box and uh, kind of the front seat box area as well. Um, my wife came home, she was actually gone for a week with the kids. She came back, she wanted to see what all I'd got done, so I was showing her. And um, I uh, hopped up in the boat and was kind of showing her what I did. And as I was walking towards the back seat box, I kind of heard a little kind of pop sort of crack sound. Figured it was just kind of like the fiberglass settling. I don't, it's probably not a thing. I shouldn't have ignored it, but so that's weird. And my wife said, you know, the floor's kind of bowing under your feet a little bit when you step in that one spot, right? It's like, no. And I, I kind of kept stepping in that one spot and I didn't feel it or I, I couldn't see it. So I hopped out of the boat and she stood where I was and sure enough, you could see it sagging a little bit, maybe 32nd to a 16th at the most. Regardless, it was moving. It's kind of bummed out. I didn't know if that was all right. I assumed it was probably okay, but to the advice of everybody on the forum, what I'm going to do is something I don't really want to do, but I'm going to cut out the floor in the section that's over the gas tank. Um, my stringers are about 20 inches apart I believe and from the gas tank they run probably almost 60 inches I would say front to back so there's basically a 20 inch by 60 inch unsupported area with half inch plywood even with the two layers of CSM on top the layer on the bottom and the layer of 10 ounce cloth on top it's still flexing a little bit um, it would probably be fine, but why do something half-assed when I'm doing the rest of the thing as good as I can, so. Unfortunately, I'm going to, uh, spend this morning cutting out my floor. Yay! Oh well, it is what it is. It shouldn't be too bad, actually. I'm just, it feels like... I'm halting forward progress and going backwards when I do this, which I guess I technically am, but the nice thing is once I lay out the part that I'm going to cut out, I'll just cut it with the circular saw. It's going to take five seconds to do that. And then I'll already have the perfect template to put back in. So I'm basically going to cut out a rectangle, stiffen up that piece, and essentially just glue it back in. And then I'll tab that back in with some 1708 at the seams. but. Hey, it is what it is. At least I know when I'm done, it'll be solid as a tank, so. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, I got the, uh, <clears throat> got all the supplies I think I need. Well, tools, I guess, is what I should say. Um, so what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna lay out the kind of the cut line that I'm gonna use to cut out the floor. Um, one thing I am doing is technically the tank actually goes back to there. That's basically where the tank ends. You can kind of see that opening that I haven't covered yet um, under the rear seat. So this piece here is actually kind of acting almost like a bulkhead. It's just technically on the top side of the deck. But as long as this tabbing is there, I didn't do the inside yet, but this tabbing here is basically acting as a stiffener for the floor anyway. So there's really no reason for me to go beyond that which makes my life easier so I'll probably stay maybe a couple inches away from this tabbing and cut that way um, and then the nice thing about fiberglass and resin is you can still kind of see through it even after it's cured so you can actually still see I can see pretty well I don't know how well it's showing up on camera but this line here is actually the original line that I drew on the floor on the plywood before I glassed it in. So I use those as marks to where the stringers are below. So you can actually see these light spots. That's actually the screws in the 5200 that I put in to the stringers. <clears throat> so I can actually use that as a guide as to where to cut. Now what I'm probably gonna do is 
come in maybe an inch inside of that line on each side um, because my stringers are inch and a half. So three quarters of an inch, assuming this thing's perfectly centered, would put me right on the edge. But just for some safety factor, I want to come in a little bit. I don't want to cut right over the stringer for two reasons. One is I don't want my saw blade to accidentally penetrate that glass on the stringer and compromise the, the watertight seal. And two, I mean, this is glued in with peanut butter. So if I cut part way through the stringer, when I go to lift this thing out, it's still gonna be glued down. So I'm not gonna be able to get it out, at least not easily or without damaging something. So I'm gonna stay in. And then when I make the cut, this piece in theory should just drop down on top of the gas tank. Um, so when I go to put it back in then, I'm probably gonna end up putting in either cleats to the sides of the stringers, or I may actually just screw in like cleats to the underside of the deck um, to help support the piece when I put it back in. So I'm gonna put it back in with peanut butter and the seams and then tab the whole way around it so it should be fine. But we'll see how that goes when I get there, but at least for marking out the part I'm gonna cut, that's what I'm gonna do. And then as far as I'm, how far forward I'm gonna come. That's what I'm trying to actually remember as far forward as the, the last bulkhead is. Um, my wife actually did mention that it was bowing a little bit up here, but I'm not so concerned about that because that's actually where the ski locker is gonna go. I believe it comes up to right about here. I'll have to double check that. But. So the last bulkhead though, I believe is right in here somewhere so i'm gonna have to go back through my uh pictures and just kind of verify where that is but um yeah i'm gonna get this thing laid out and we'll start cutting it and i'll uh show you how show you what we end up with um i'm still trying to figure out how to prop my camera up on stuff here without me holding it because my my new phone doesn't fit my old holder so i'll have to rig something up here and then i can show you the actual process be right back All right, got this thing laid out. Um, so there's a couple of things I figured out since the last clip, um, kind of reviewing my old pictures and checking something. So let me stand up here so you can get a bigger view. Um, so this area here is what I determined is the area I'm gonna cut out. It's, uh, actually I have no idea what the dimensions are. Let me measure real quick. I don't trip over my microphone camera and I can open my tape measure with my teeth. Money. Um, oops. There we go. So lengthwise it's right about 31 inches by call it 26 and a half ish. A little over 26 and 5 eighths. Um, so actually a lot smaller than I was thinking it was gonna need to be. So in the last clip, you could probably see me kind of knocking around on the floor. So I, I wasn't able to get like a perfect uh, measurement on where the old bulkhead was in this area. I kind of had a ballpark because if you see here, this is where the old seat box used to come out for the front seat, kind of lifted it up off the deck. Um, I could see that this back edge was pretty close to right on the bulkhead, which actually ended up being pretty much right on the money. I wouldn't be surprised if the original boat, this piece of wood was actually part of the bulkhead because they seem to, it looks like a lot of the pieces were probably CNC cut and kind of integral to a bunch of other stuff. I get it, it's an efficient use of wood from Bayliner's perspective. So it's just, it's harder to do those precise cuts on a non-production type scale. So I'm making things more individual, just easier. Um, but anyway, I ended up, doing the old drywall trick so you can hear if I get off that cavity. It sounds nice and hollow. It gets real dense right on that bulkhead. 
and then hollow again as it gets up into the ski locker cavity. So I just kind of approximated. It still sounded kind of hollow there. And as I went further forward, it was very rigid sounding. So I just stayed off of the bulkhead a little bit. And then I was also concerned about, like I said, it was a little bit um, soft, not soft, that's the wrong word. It makes it sound like it's rotten still, but um, the floor still had a little bit of flex up here. That was, so once you get away from this bulkhead, you're kind of over the ski locker and you kind of get into a similar kind of cavity where it's a long, same width essentially. Um, well, up here it gets a little bit skinnier, but not much. Um, and then the next bulkhead is up here somewhere. I forget. Right there. Right there's the, uh, and that's not even a full bulkhead. What I did is I actually put in like an arch support underneath just to kind of strengthen that up. So really right here is the biggest area of concern as far as that forward spot. But that's right where the ski locker is going to go. So the original boat, don't ask me why they did this, but the original ski locker was right about here. So it actually worked out that the back maybe six or eight inches of it was actually over past this bulkhead and totally unusable. So there was actually a piece of plywood subsurface below this cutout that basically covered the fuel tank. So you basically had like six, eight inches of unusable space in terms of the, the opening, which I thought was kind of dumb. Like that's plenty wide up there. My initial thought was, oh, maybe they couldn't go up past those vertical supports because the ski locker was wider, but it seems to fit fine to me. So what I'm gonna do is just cut out the ski locker hole and then I don't have that issue anymore because this is, this will be screwed into the deck and the piece of wood that this is made out of is actually pretty thick. It almost looks like it's inch thick plywood, if that's a thing. Um, if I, it's at least three quarters, but you can kind of, maybe you can see in there, I don't know. And it's actually really solid still. It's, I guess this is gel coat, I'm not sure, but they even went ahead and sealed the hole with resin. It's like, why couldn't you do that everywhere else on the boat? I guess they figured this is the only spot that the customer might ever see. But, so that's nice and sealed. The wood's not rotted at all. The frame's still in good shape. It's missing a couple screws, but I can put those back in. The only thing I don't like about the ski locker though is it literally just lifts up and out of the floor, I guess. Like the frame is part of the door. I don't know, it seems weird to me. So I may rethink that and maybe put the, the frame in by itself and take the screws out. I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. It's kind of stupid. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's the good news is I don't have to worry about up there. And then back here, the area is a lot smaller than I thought. So I'm just gonna cut out this, it's almost a square, reinforce it and uh, put it back in. You could kind of argue back here is the same concern, but I really don't anticipate too many people stepping back here. And plus you have that support from the, the vertical parts of the seat box. So it's kind of stiffens it anyway. So yeah, that's really the only spot. Again, I could probably get away with not doing this, but you know what? It's gonna take me half a day to do, so. Why not just do it? Then I'll be done. Um, so yeah, let me get my Cirque saw and get suited up and get this thing cut out. Be back in a second. Hey buddy. Um, so this is what I'm planning on. Um, 
looks probably kind of confusing if you don't know what it is. So what I did is I took strips of the leftover foam I had for making templates and I ripped it on the table saw. There's still some foam ba or metal backing on it, but I tried to peel off as much as I could of that. So this type of foam is actually, um, I hope I'm getting this right, polyisocyanurate, um, which is what a lot of people I think use and replace in a, or I guess in place of urethane foam since it's hard to get and expensive. So this stuff doesn't react with the polyester resin, whereas like the pink and blue foams will actually melt when you put the resin on it. Um, so what I'm doing is making basically just a stiffening kind of grid out of this. So I kind of mitered all the edges at 45 degrees just to make it easier for the 1708 to go up and over and kind of contour around everything. So I'm going to use some peanut butter to put these in. Um, and then once that starts to set up, I'll go over top with the 1708 tabbing. And that should be pretty much it for this thing. Then I'll, once these things finish kicking off, I coated these pieces of cedar with resin. Um, I don't know if cedar's good or not to use, but I figure these are basically just gonna be cleats for putting this piece back in. So they're not structural, they're basically just holding the, the patch. Um, so yeah, let me get these things glued in, tabbed, and show you what it looks like when I'm done. Oh, one, one other thing. This piece I cut out of the floor, the way I joined these together was actually, I did like a tongue and groove joint. Um, but as you can see, the, the pieces didn't come together completely. It was kind of crooked in the boat. The other side of the floor over there, the joint's really closed, but on this side, it's a little bit open. So I'm wondering, that may actually be a good bit of what the flex was coming from. Sorry about that. So, um, so what I did is ended up filling that gap in with uh, peanut butter and then yeah, uh, covering over with 1708 so that should I mean I, that alone may have been enough to fix that problem I had but figured I had it cut out so let me try this it's if anything it's a method for me to try out this foam thing I've been wanting to, to try it originally on the floor but I didn't know much about it so I was kind of skeptical but this will be a good experiment and uh, hopefully it goes well so I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done here it is I think it turned out pretty good um, a couple of small air bubbles that I fought with for 20 straight minutes and couldn't get rid of, so I'm going to call it good. Plus it's on the underside of the deck, so waterproofing shouldn't be a problem. Um, going to let this kick off and... Hi! Hi! Let this kick off and, uh, yeah, screw the cleats in and get this thing back in the boat. I don't feel like nothing happened, except my floor will be actually stiff. Guys, I'm gonna try and get a quick shot of this. Um, kind of racing the clock here. I got a batch of peanut butter over there that's kicking off right now. Um, I got the cleats in. I peanut buttered them in. The two side ones are up against the stringers. Uh, stainless steel screws going into the stringers. Um, the two end ones are just screwed in from the top underneath, so they just kind of stick out as like a ledge. And then the piece will get screwed in the whole way around on the perimeter. I'm gonna put peanut butter underneath whole perimeter with what I got left here. Get it screwed down, countersunk screws and everything, and then I'll use whatever peanut butter I got left in there to fill in basically the saw curve from when I cut it out. So uh, let me get at it. Sorry, it's a quick video. I'm just racing the clock. Be right back. There it is. Sorry about the bad light. Kind of got stuck working at night again. Kind of what happens during the week after the kids go to bed is my free time. Um, so yeah, I got the cleats resined, installed. Um, I basically just pre-drilled the holes, countersunk them. And then I figured when I put the peanut butter in between the cleats and the stringers, that would kind of smash it into the holes as much as I could. Um, plus they should be sealed anyway, since there's peanut butter in between them. Um, so I did that on the two sides, like I said in the last video, and then front and back, I just did them like on the underside, since there wasn't a bulkhead there, but should be fine. Um, Got the piece back in, screwed in the whole way around on all four sides, and used the rest of the peanut butter I had to seal it up. It's not perfect, but I just needed to basically fill the gap at this point, and then once it kicks off, um, next time I get out here, I'll take the, uh, man, that's bright. I'll take the uh, angle grinder with the flap wheel and just kind of smooth it over and uh, get it ready for some tabbing. I think one layer of tabbing should be good enough. Um, 
I don't see any reason to do more than one. It's it's pretty solid as is, honestly, but just for a little bit of extra strength, I'm gonna put some 1708 tape. Actually, to be honest with you, I may just do one full sheet of 1708 over it because I ordered some extra thinking instead of doing what I did here as a fix. I was actually gonna go over this entire area of the floor with 1708, so I, I have it, so I might just cut out one big sheet to cover all that and not even do the tabbing. Then it'll be smoother, won't have like humps all over the place, so. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna get done tonight, and this should uh, pretty much wrap up the floor fix. Thank God. Um, man, I don't know what's next. I guess the only other thing I want to finish up before I get on to engine mounts, and I uh, keep putting the engine mounts off, and <laughs> just don't want to do it. Um, up in here, I'm gonna do a little bit more 1708 with some of the stuff that I ordered. Um, just stiffen it up a little bit. I, when I sit on it, you can kind of hear some flexing. So one more layer on, on there should be plenty. Um, and then I'll cut out the holes for the storage. And then I want to make some, I wasn't sure what I was going to do here, if you can see this, but that's the underside of the front seat box there. Um, I was originally going to make a bulkhead that would go in there permanently. Um, underneath that to support the front seat, like the top of it. I might still do that, but I also kind of bounce the idea around in my head of making a piece that kind of screws into that and comes up at like a L bracket shape and then screws into the, the wood there, um, kind of like a, into the top cap, so then the top cap would end up supporting that piece. Not sure what I'm gonna do. I don't actually like the idea of that being open the whole way back, so I'll probably end up just putting a bulkhead in, but my only other thought is I could kind of maximize the storage under that front seat if I brought the bulkhead further back, so I don't know if that makes any sense. It makes sense in my head, but I can picture it, so that's where I'm at. Um, not sure what the next step's going to be, but uh, I'll catch you guys next time.